What's up, everybody? Hey, yeah. how you doing? It's Lauren. It's Lauren Marshall, everybody. Joining me on the Sketchcraft Morning Podcast. Oh, my gosh. Uh, good day. <laughs> Lauren Marshall from Ash. Australian. One sec. One sec. Uh, Dad, I gotta kill the music. <laughs> this is the morning podcast. A little less formal. So, um, Lauren, you. Most people, if you guys are on Instagram, like I am a lot, you may be aware of an Instagram account called the Martial Arts, right? Yes. Yes. A little bit of a pun name, but yes, that's the one. I, I got a little bit on that too. I'll, I'll explain in a second. Um, I came <laughs> to find Laura's art. Oh. I don't know, years ago. Years um, ago. Yeah, with the turtles. You did a lot of cool turtles and Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've sort of been like friendly little art art friends on the Instagram because uh, I watch MasterChef Australia a lot. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone around here knows that I love cooking. It's the only hobby I got. And MasterChef Australia is awesome. So when I wanted to stream it uh, out of Australia... Uh, you know, to somewhat I help. I came to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, to somewhat help. I, I needed a, a Yoohoo, Yoohoo, a Yahoo Australian account. I'm like, I need your help. And it had to be weird, right? Like, <laughs> Oh, you stole my phone number. It's totally cool. I mean, not creepy <laughs> right. at all. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, I hope, I hope she never has to, like, fix the password on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Lauren, um, recently, when I say recently, like today, finally launched her first Kickstarter. I'm going to bring this up really quickly. Boosh to doosh. There's my questions. For, I'm mean, going to let me get this right. Lana, how do you say it? Lana Liuka or Lana Luca? L- Luca. Say Luca. Lana Luca. Lana Ooh. Luca, Blood Ties. Your first self published comic book, right? Yes, it is. So, collaboration between a friend and a colorist, but no, it's been a love project for oh, like four or five years, I guess. Super awesome. This looks, this looks pretty amazing. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. So I just thought, hey, you know, um, okay, first I got to be, <laughs> let's be a little honest. You did ask if I'd be willing to do a variant cover as a stretch goal if you were able to meet those, right? Oh, God, yeah. You're yeah. like one of my favorite peeps, so of course I would have asked you. So when people were going to be like, well, Rob's just doing this to get paid, I would say, you're damn right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to live. I need to pay the bills. I need to eat. Of course I did. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like YouTube's paying my bills. So <laughs> the Kickstarters is the way to go. Uh, and I, I backed it too, so I'm looking forward to getting this comic. Now, I thought it'd be a Great opportunity to bring you on and just just ask you a few questions. Amazing. Go for it. All right. So uh, let's just go. So how long ago? Okay. First, let's tell everyone, what's the basic premise for your book, Lana Luca? Oh, holy moly. Um, so the, the way I try and describe it to people is that if you think about Tank Girl cross with Hellboy, I guess, it gets a really good mix between those two, but right. it's just been a big manifestation of about everything that I've loved, everything that I've been into. Um, I guess it's just a it's, a it's a love project in terms of everything that I love into a comic. So you would say, so she's fighting demons basically? Is she hunting down demons? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're trying to play into a lot of like mythology type of stuff as well. So she's sort of unknown in terms of where her origin comes from um, and – her basically she's tied to what you would call a guy called D, which is head of a mafia type thing in a parallel universe. So she has to go and do a whole type of stuff for him. Um, and that sort of plays into where her origin comes from and why she has no connection to anything and kind of just appeared out of nowhere. So it's kind of tying into that. But um, think like mafia dealing with souls and something to do with Greek mythology and something to do with human nature and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it's picking all the best bits of everything and mashing it into one. So when did you first conceive of the story? Like what were you working at a coffee shop and you're like, I hate my life. You know, I wish I could just <laughs> murder demons and fight the mafia. Like, 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 That's pretty much <laughs> since I was born. I don't know. <laughs> right. uh, no, I was working at a, um, art store actually you know selling whatever it was actually a really good job but I actually met one of the girls there and one of my colleagues said look look why do you why do you actually draw a lot of fan art and not actually your own stuff 
And I was like, oh, well, that's a really good question. And it kind of led into building and creating a character that was my own. And like I said, when I said it was a manifest manifestation of myself, that's kind of where it began. And from there, we've just built. And then when I got Tanya on board, the writer, she just completely exploded the whole universe. So, yeah, it's just kind of gone from there. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, um, I'm a little bit older. So, like, it's been awesome for me the past few years to watch. So, when I, let, me, let me go back. When I was a teenager, early kid into my teens, the thing that caught my attention into comics was these creator-owned projects like the Turtles which were the first, mm. you know, two guys can make something and actually see money from it. And yeah. then when Image took off, you know, that too and and all of that. And then somewhere around the early 2000s, after the first Spider-Man movie, Comic-Con turned into like this giant thing for movies, you know? Like it was, it, you can- Yeah, how good you, is it? It's so good. Yeah, it's great. Except for the, the, the difference for me was that I used to go to that con to see what was new. And then it became more about celebrating what I love, right? So mm. it was it, not a bad, it was just a shift. And I think one of the reasons for that was there was very there was no way to, to publish your own stuff at that time. All the, the, the mid-tier publishers went away. There was this paper shortage in America in the mid-90s. Oh, wow. It killed all these distributors, all these, uh, these, it, these publishing places like Event Comics. You know who Joe Casada is? He's mm -hmm. the editor in chief mm -hmm. at Marvel, so he had his own company called Event, and they did a character called Ash, which was like a superhero firefighter. It was pretty cool, crazy story. I never knew what the hell was going on, but it looked awesome. And like <laughs> that, that company went under because of the, the paper problem. Um, but then around the late 2000s, Kickstarter launched, and then now we're able, people are basically able to do mail order, where you can create your own character and actually ship it straight to fans. And so it's awesome to finally see. Anyone that I follow, you know, step into that area and, and be able to, to put a bit of themselves down on the paper uh, in a way that, you know, for me growing up, like Kevin Smith did in his films too, right? Where he literally put himself in the films. But then he had all yeah. these comics that further expanded, you know, that universe. And it was always goofy stuff like stealing action figures and <laughs> bootlegging action figures. But, the, you know, you write what you know. So um, when you design Luca, right, or any, like, Basically, when you design Luca or a character, like what goes, like what goes through your mind? Like, what do you, what do you start with when you, when like you're designing, say her? Oh God, I think so you go through that that phase, right? You kind of think about like, oh, what are people going to like? What, uh, like, are people going to actually enjoy this character and whatnot? But it was more. I went through a very long process of actually saying to myself, like, no. I need to create someone that I'm going to enjoy that I'm really going to be able to throw out into the world and actually just, I don't know, just kick some ass, you know? Like I, I think if you overthink it and you let the outside world get involved, then it's just going to destroy and you're going to just go too hard on it. So I just said to myself, like, no, you need to do someone that you're going to love and you're going to be able to really just back it hard, you know? You're going to have a good story for it because I've always said, like, a good story for a character is better than making them look good, you know? Like, And so that's just what I did. I just I stuck to my guns. Plus, I mean, you're going to be drawing the characters for hours on end, yeah. right? So, like, like yeah. if you're drawing what you think people will like and not what you enjoy, then, I mean, welcome to hell. I'm going like, to hate <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that's going to be a tough tough winter to get through yeah oh yeah so no totally understand so what what tools do you prefer to use like like uh, pen paper photoshop uh clips to oh, i'm a pen paint? and paper girl oh awesome so did yeah, you so, so all this is traditionally drawn or digitally inked or cross no, uh, well tr traditionally inked um mm -hmm. and then digitally colored right so i was originally going to color it myself and i actually tossed up the idea of coloring it Copic marker slash watercolor, um, but then wasn't sure. That's a, like I said before. That's when I think like, oh, it's, it's everyone going to like it or not? But I'm not too sure. But I just decided to go with the digital coloring because the first thing that I really wanted for this project was to support local artists as well. So that was a big thing for me is making sure that I get Australian artists out there because the the industry here is i don't know a little bit lacking which sucks a bit so mm. yeah that, that was a big decision that i made there but yeah traditionally inked which is good and i'll be hand inking all the pages um who's doing the coloring 
Um, Josh Spencer, he's a um, actually a caricature artist from Sydney that I met, but his colouring work I was drawn to just because it was so vibrant and fit really well with the gritty look of Lana. So, yeah, I don't know. I just went with him and he's been amazing and really good to work with. So, yeah. Awesome. So um, when you are designing, let's say when you're designing Luke or any of the other characters, villains, <laughs> like what would you what would you say is probably your your most fun? Like, what is the easiest part? What sucks? You know, like ooh, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, Lana's always good because I've drawn it for so long and I've tweaked her and whatnot. But there is a character Eddie that I'm kind of interested in. Um, she's like a, a siren mermaid girl, but um, she's a little bit thicker. Is probably the best word to say to her. So she's um, Polynesian girl, but she's got seaweed hair and she's got scales on her body, but it's all very subtle. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with that. And she's a very flirtatious and fun and energetic character. So I think that'll be really fun to deal with the emotions and stuff on that one. When you, when you're designing, do you ever test run the characters? Like you come up with the design, do you, do you ever say, maybe I should, draw this for a page or two before i commit to all the details like, like <laughs> oh god no god, i'm so stubborn it's ridiculous it's just ingrained into my <laughs> blood like, but I, i'll do like well, one to five different designs and i'll throw it to friends family and stuff i'm like okay which one kind of intrigues you the most and which one do you think will fit this bio the best mm. but you know when you get an idea in your head and you're just like no nah, I just, I just want this. I want it really bad, and this is what I see. Yep, that's. I just made the decision. And I go with it. And then you know, twenty-two pages later, you're like, "Why did you're I do like, that?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah so many, so many it? strands of hair with indiv- <laughs> in every, and every hair has a snake, and the snake has a personality, and the personalities has their own word balloons. <laughs> right? It will look cool. It will be good in the long run. Is there anything about the character designs that you find challenging? Like what, I mean, is there anything where you're like, I don't know, you know. Look, I've always, I've always challenged with um, male men. Hmm. So I think me, what's really good is if I draw over and over again, I'm going to get much, much better at it. So I kind of see it as a positive thing for me to draw a lot more. Um, I'm currently teaching classes for younger kids at a art school for illustration and, and, and manga and comics and stuff. So being there with them as well is actually really helpful for me to keep practicing as well because when they ask me questions, I actually have to work with them as well, you know? Right. Was that a way to, to draw your comic in class and get paid too? Like, <laughs> you're oh, like, I'm, I'm, we're doing this together. Everyone chip in, grab some microns and ink this page. Give <laughs> me feedback, yeah. yeah learn, learn about work for hire, kids. You own nothing. <laughs> 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 so child labor Woo-hoo. <laughs> i didn't say that you said that fyi they're doing their own comic it's all good it's <laughs> awesome uh <laughs> yeah i uh i think like I, I three years ago i moved from san diego to idaho um, and as I was cleaning out the studio apartment, I, d- I had this box of, I've only kept one box of art since I was a kid of some stuff. And so I was trying to explain to some of the fans out there that I, that I have that I, I could not draw women 20 years ago. Like that just mm-hmm. couldn't happen. So there was this, I, there was this thing where my buddy and I took turns drawing red Monica from battle chasers. Are you familiar with? Yeah. Yeah. Babe. Yeah. And, and mine did not come out like that. <laughs> like it was, it was, <laughs> The to- like I remember hitting that point. Like I knew construction and perspective. I all those things at the time, but I'm like these faces are not good. Like this is not. This is the opposite. Yeah, it's a masculine woman. Uh, yeah, and hey, if that's the goal, but that wasn't the goal. And I was really trying, <laughs> and I I kind of realized sometimes I think when you're drawing from memory, we tend to draw our own faces. You ever notice yeah. that? Oh, like, God, yeah. And so God, sometimes yeah. I you can... Say that to people that... Go ahead. They always say, like, oh, you go same same gender is way easier to draw. And I'm like, God, yeah, I look in my mirror every day. I'm going to see the same sort of thing. 
Yeah, like Frank I... Frazetta always drew from memory because he's a genius. But mm. if you've ever looked at the faces on the dudes, they're all Frank Frazetta. Like, <laughs> mm. 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 Same guy. <laughs> yeah, it's the same dude. And it's Frank Frazetta. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> um, now, he didn't have the problem with women, but I was basically putting my face on women's bodies. And I was like, well, that's just weird, right? Like, like <laughs> I mean, I see you not having that problem. So, like, my God, you're so pretty, Rob. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the Battle Chasers fans did not agree, but <laughs> so, uh, um, so putting on, let's just put it on your writer's hat. You have a writer for the book. I do. Yes. Now, um, do you develop the story and collaborate with Tanya? Is it Tanya Beeson? T yeah, Tanya Beeson, because we've got to have the Australian accent, Beeson. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she was actually my teacher for when I did my animation diploma. So I've known her for, oh God, 10, 10 years or something like that. So she's been uh, in the background or next beside me and supporting me this whole time. Um, but it was more I came up with the idea, the world, but it was more just I couldn't put it down on paper and make it sound good because – I'm illiterate, but <laughs> I can draw, I can't write. But yeah, she just brought it to life. She's absolutely incredible. And I just fell in love with the script when she started it. So it was a good match, I think. And she's sending you like full 22 page scripts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've also already established the next six issues as well. So should anything go ahead, then we're ready to go. Um, and it's just a, a whole world that just has so many different avenues to go down. And I couldn't even imagine it would get this big, but she somehow has this incredible mind and just went for it. And uh, it's amazing. Awesome. So you, so she was your animation instructor. Yeah, she was um, a lecturer. I think I did my animation diploma back in 2006. Hmm. So God, it's longer than 10 years. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, she uh, has been teaching for animation, graphic design, all kinds of things. She's just is, is a very good person to go to for any kind of like support or help. And was she that, just was thankful. Was that 2D mm -hmm. animation? 2D, 3D, um, like traditional 2D and flash 2D, like digital 2D and also, yeah, standard 3D. So she just completely just – she's an all-rounder. Did you enjoy any of the animation? Yes, very much. That was my first place that I wanted to go was to do animation. But given I was living in Perth, WA, <laughs> um, there's no no avenues here, unfortunately. It's gotten much better since back then. Um, back then it was very, very hard and you had to either move to Eastern States, Sydney or Melbourne to get any kind of job. But if not, you'd have to go to the States or something like that. It was just very hard to get anything because the internet wasn't really exploding yet, you know. Right, right. Um, did you did you ever keep any of your animation? Like, did you actually animate characters, or were you doing like motion graphics and just general three D? Well, stuff? yeah, I did a lot of like test animations, like you know, explosions and water drops and stuff like that. Did and you do the weighted I'm, ball, where you gotta, oh, like, yeah. drop a ball from different weights? Right, like, squash and stretch <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we did that so i teach that to everyone if anyone ever wants to know animation but um we had a couple of end projects for the class and they were either 2d or 3d you got to choose but yeah i haven't really done much since then but i love it still and i still think about the things i learned like really pushing emotions and really pushing movements and stuff mm. which is good because i've moved it across into my drawing that i do now yeah the way i describe it was I, I i took an animation program not so much to be an animator but because i knew animation would improve my art because i knew how hard mm. that was and mm. i felt that for me uh i, I enjoyed animating in one drawing like, <laughs> like if i can make a move in one yeah. drawing then I did my job, but this 30 frames per second thing is not for Rob. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? You go, go, okay, I'm going to start with keyframes, and then I'm going to do the in-betweens, and then I'm going to decide if I'm going to do ones or twos. And then or, I jump out that window, God. you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you have to really be in love with with fixing 20 things when you have to fix one thing, you know? like yeah. You ever, you ever get one of those frames? I'm sorry, go ahead. 
I, I really like the rough animation though. That's like, it's kind of my jam. I love it. I, I preferred really it. Cool. It's the cleanup that I was like, why am I doing this again? <laughs> like, like, it looks better with just pencils. Like, this like, can is we... the fifth time. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see Fantasia 2000? Yeah. Yeah, so there's that Firebird suite at the end. And if you've ever seen the pencil test of that, I remember I got the DVD. I was in the Army, so I want to say like 2001. I got the DVD for this. And they put the pencil test for that Firebird where he comes out to lava and it's falling off his wings. Mm. And I literally just threw my pencil. I was like, well, that's it. I quit. You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to – that is the most complicated thing I have – one guy did that. <laughs> I don't think anyone is. How is that man living? Like, like – <laughs> Oh, I always look at like Glenn Kane stuff from Disney, and I'm like, holy crap! Right, right, yeah. His his he's pretty amazing. And Chris uh, Chris Saunders storyboard work on the line. I always wish uh, they put out his work from Mulan. He did a yeah, lot of developmental I, work on that. Really good. What influences, artistic influences, did you have specifically? Maybe not. Maybe um, if it's just this book, but you know, what are your general artistic? In influences? general, yeah. Like, well, I mean, who do you? I, do you know how – I don't know if you knew. I, I lived in Sydney about well, three years back for about a year and a half, um, and I actually shared a studio with John Somariva and David Yarden and Daniel Picciotto, um, and they were huge influences. Like I know John John was more an influence for me because he's quite stylized and did the the Turtles Cross Batman sure. series. Um, and he's and, doing the Marvel action and Avengers yeah, right now. Yeah, he's IDW. doing – crazy stuff at the moment which i'm super proud of him for right. um and david was really good because he's just been he's a veteran like complete veteran and he was very good in terms of just picking my work and being like look um this is the anatomy stuff you need to work on this is the composition stuff you need to work on blah 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 so these guys were really good in terms of just bringing me back down because i think i was in this la la land where i was like no nah, i am gonna make it i'm gonna be an amazing artist like blah 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 and then these guys were like no <laughs> like, mm. come back down to earth and i was like right okay and that's when i knuckled down and really started improving everything which was kind of the kick i needed i think so those guys were really good and and daniel um he was one of their uh, like proteges, I guess, and he was um he's absolutely just blown everything out of the world at the moment. His work has completely excelled. It's been amazing to watch him grow as an artist as well. So just being in that little studio with them has been incredible, and it sucked that I had to come back, but um it, it was just yeah, I think John was really good for me. I think I found your stuff, oh, my God, like five or six years ago when I was just browsing through Kickstarter as well and fell in love and, you know, uh, just. Very nice. yeah. I, got, I got lucky. <laughs> so there's a, there's a guy, um, Michael Hurd, who did a game called Wolverblade. Him and a mm. buddy of his, they spent. Oh like five yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw that. Yeah, and so he hit me up to do all these cutscenes about four, three or four years ago. I don't know, mm. maybe five years ago, and uh, for the game. And at the time, I had just gone through all this crazy stuff on Kickstarter. And my business partner, it's a long story, mm. like stole a bunch of money. I'm like, you know what? Now it's not a good time because I don't want to mm. hold up your project. You know? And he's like, we know anyone else? I'm like, this guy. And I pointed to Red J. I'm like, that guy's amazing. And so he got <laughs> Red J to do it. And I'm like, that's freaking awesome. So like, yeah, because I'm a big fan of John's. But I've never met him. But I, he caught my eye with the, remember the Iron Man 2 sketch cards? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was an amazing set to watch. And I was like, I know what? Now I like these sketch cards. Like, <laughs> he's, he's, well, it's a good thing because he's such a mellow guy as well. And it's just easy to talk to him. And I don't think I appreciated the time with him as much as I should. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's just a dude you can go get a drink with. And you can't even think he's just like a guy that's completely into Ninja Turtles and, and Zelda and stuff. And then you see him do his work and you're like, oh, crap. I'm just, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> well that's where i got a little lucky when i was a kid going to comic-con because there was so much talent they were really quick to tell me like hey you know when you're like in your 30s is probably when you want to do this even though all these young kids are doing the books and they're making millions of dollars right? not everyone's making young blood books you know what i mean not everyone's gonna yeah. have their own young yeah. blood jet you're gonna be uh with us back here but when you're older <laughs> like it's it's okay you don't have to be the best you just you know work on the quality and Just at, keep doing you. <laughs> well, you know, really though, but your work has come quite a quite a bit of a ways. I, even I've noticed in in the last mm -hmm. few years, and so it's been really awesome to see. You know, you go 
from just oh here's you know some awesome spider-man art or really I'm, I'm always a big earthworm gym fan so when you drop one of those yeah. i'm like all right you know that's awesome yeah, yeah buddy <laughs> But when you announce that you're going to do your own book, then I'm like, all right, now she because she's going to know the real pain. <laughs> Welcome to the hell. No, no. <laughs> I've I've got my uh, yeah. I'm ready. I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> More to the point, though, it's just awesome to be able to see. Uh, how do I say this? Like sometimes with an image, you only get to see. Uh, like someone's line quality, not their personality. Does that make sense? Like, like there could be yeah. scenes where, you know, Lana's, I don't know, eating pancakes or something. You know what I mean? And like that, that's something yeah. that's more you than you're not gonna draw Earthworm Jim sitting around eating pancakes. You know, like so. I like, could. Yeah. Hey, that's an idea. <laughs> People will be like really confused. <laughs> um. So I have a question. So if you let's say this book gets done and you know you get a few more. You are you open to shipping the book off the image or somewhere to Oh god, yeah. yeah. Um I've already discussed like I was talking to my partner Lucky, he was like, Look, there's XYZ comic books around me. I'm gonna go just hand them in, like I don't even care if they give me money for it. Can you guys put this on your shelf and get it out there? Because I it's more about creating. I keep saying to especially the kids in my class, I'm like, it's not worth doing stuff and then forgetting about it if you're not gonna share it with anyone, you know? Mm. I think that's the best part about creativity is that actually sharing with people and getting them to enjoy it, you know? How old are the, roughly the kids in your class? Like, What, what age group? Um, oh, God. I've got far, year five. Oh, well, not year five. Five-year-olds to 15-year-olds. Because my favorite thing to do is uh, you guys do this out in Australia where – you go to a coffee shop and they put up like the kids who draw pictures. They put up their art. Yeah, oh god, yeah. I love to go there when they're not there and just be like, all right, who's the real talent here? And it's never the <laughs> one. For me, it's never the one who's drawing perfect. It's that person that knows. There, they got the energy. They know what they're doing. My, <laughs> yeah. They <laughs> like, got the mojo we need. <laughs> do you have a few in there where you're just like these little these little suckers are going to be yeah. super talents if they. Can you already see it? He, you know, I've already got jealousy compared to like a 12 year old. <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's some that kids that just you go like, okay, I gave them the script and this is the project for this term. I was like, this is the script. Um, it's only going to be two pages. It's only going to be six panels per page, but I need you guys to sort it out and we'll, we'll go through like, you know, panel shots and, you know, wide shot and extreme close up and blah, blah, blah. I was talking to them about that. So one girl just smashes it out and her just her drawing was just very ex like her expressions were the best and oh, oh, and she just I don't know it was ridiculous and I said there's no kid at 12 should be this talented but holy heck I just want to see her you know succeed and I just want to push her to do more you know right it's awesome too because they don't have that like expectation game at that point you know like they're mm. kind of just focused on the project right like just you you know you'd be surprised how much they they, they beat themselves down because because of instagram and facebook and stuff they're already mm. on there and they're like oh my god my stuff's not as good as this blah 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 and you're like oh, <laughs> oh my god calm down you're in 12. <laughs> <laughs> they got jim lee's page open and they're like this guy you know what i mean like <laughs> glenn keen's right. you know they're <laughs> yeah, these, guys, these guys are like 40 50. you've got a little while like <laughs> Yeah, in age, but like three hundred in like art hours. You know what I mean? When yeah, you do like pretty the, much. The, the war chest. Stuff. Well, I said, I said that you know that little quote where you just like you can't master something unless you draw it a thousand times, and all of their faces like, <gasps> what? I, th I know they get yeah. that that number a thousand just always. Yeah. Oh god, just blows their mind. Apparently. Well, there's that. Who's that artist? He's a. He was. You ever see a cartoon called Oban Racers? It was like from the early 2000s. No. It was this no. French anime, like pod racer, French anime. And wow. the guy who worked on that, he's out there right now in the in Japan doing different animes. But he has a book where his kid draws like, there's like scribbles, like crazy looking characters. And then he, he takes them and renders them out, you know, these ideas. And it is so creative. <laughs> and you're looking at like, I stopped thinking that way. You know, mm. like, <laughs> like I'm not thinking like, like I'm maybe thinking you know a little too grounded sometimes, you know? You might go out of the box. Right. Um, so this isn't your first Kickstarter though, right? You did you did at I've least I've done go two actually before this. Were they both art books? Yeah, just art books. So the one before was like a collection. Oh god, it was like ages ago and I look at it and it kinda of makes me sad. 
Um, but wow. I did it. I did it. I put it out. Um, it was like a collection of the women in comics and just did a drawing of them. And then the second one was just a collection of like a sketchbook type thing, which was sketch biz, which was very successful, surprisingly. Yeah, I somehow missed that one. I think that's when I was moving. Like I was mm-hmm. like, I got enough money, can't go anywhere. Like I remember missing that one. <laughs> I was like, God damn, all well, you know. Uh, I'll I'll come just, back to just it. Just have to release another one. <laughs> I, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all the Kickstarters. <laughs> so when you you have any you have any advice for people putting out Kickstarters, shipping goods? Yeah. You know, uh, well, I, I I I'm a very practical girl, and I kind of think like a lot of people do tend to overthink the process quite a lot. Um, I've worked in retail pretty much all my life and I know what people want. They want it in the hand and they want it right now. So timely and efficient, definitely think about that and have people on board to help you because in the previous one I was delayed quite a bit because it was moving from Sydney to Perth and having lots of stuff going on. So there's more having people to support you there, but <clears throat> don't overthink it. But don't think about like too many different pledges or backers or something like that. Like just get it out there. People just want to get to the point, have a look at what you're offering and show them and be honest. And I think that's the best part. I, I think if people overthink it, they're just going to get too much in their head and then it's not going to happen. I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think to elaborate a little bit on the overthinking, I do see sometimes with Kickstarters, they get way involved in like these stretch goal plans and unlocking all these mm. things. And then you end up with like 7 million different tiers and you get this spreadsheet no one knows how to like do the math where they connect all their mm. orders together you know with all these like, weird especially options especially if you're like if you're like a new person starter don't overdo it man like it's going to completely stress the hell out of you mm. so like i did well, only for this one i only did like four stretch goals but i mean if we go further which fingers crossed it might even happen um we will add some later but just start simple it's just it's going to blow your mind otherwise right right um do you do you do local printing or are you getting your printing done through uh we've got uh, well i've used a guy before um comic books on demand and he did stuff for there's a um comic called xct which is australia's best selling comic and i worked on that one i think two years ago or something um, but he's really good. He gets it done. It's really good quality. And I'm all about supporting Australian companies, you know? Awesome. You ever get one of those books where you're like, that smells like cancer. Like, like, I, <laughs> like I may, I don't think, I think that may get me one day. Like that, what are they making this out of? Like, oh, <laughs> like no, it's like when you sit in a room and use Copic markers until you die. <laughs> Copic <laughs> markers. You ever, you ever get a Sharpie open and you think, it doesn't smell that bad. And then someone walks <laughs> in your room and like, what is going on in here? <laughs> Are you high? Like, have you been smoking something? I was no. at an artist alley once where everyone pulled out their Sharpies. And I was like, guys, we cannot do this. And this room is too small for this. <laughs> <laughs> There's children. Yeah. Think of the children. Think of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a little selfish. <laughs> I mean, they're low to the ground. They're already, you know, avoiding most of the fumes. I'm high up. Like, so, you know, <laughs> it's going to get me before it gets them. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. Understand. So if there is any book right now, let's just think hypothetical. Let's say if there is any book being published today and you could say just draw one issue of, do you, do you have any personal picks, you know? As in like a reading book? Or yeah, not, like an actual comic is. book. Let's just say comic book. Like, is there anything out oh, there? God. If you could just say, I I, you know, I'd like to draw one issue of that. Black Sad. But I know that's never going to happen. Wow, <laughs> Black Sad. Yeah, I know. But if, if, if it wasn't like, that's just a personal love. If it was me, uh, well, if it was for something else, it would be Hellboy or Ninja Turtles. Black Sad is amazing. Um, oh, God. It's, I, I don't think anyone's going to get their hands on that, but right. that's just next level. <laughs> yeah, so Black Sad, if people don't know, Black Sad is uh, it's, it's this noir anthropomorphic character um, in like a – I think like Zootopia meets Blade Runner or Chinatown. You know, not, not techno. Yeah, but, but like mafia, like, oh, and, you know, you've yeah. got – you got the KKK going on and oh, uh, ridiculous. And, and it's so well drawn 
<laughs> you know, you look no, at it, you're like, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, you would. Uh, I mean, obviously, turtles would be awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Would awesome. love it, but if I ever got the chance to be able to get my hands on that, but you know, future goals. Yeah, if I could think, I mean, I think you'd be pretty good at like a scud. You know, something like, like I like mm. to see. I like a bunch of crazy aliens and creatures and. Mm. You know, oh god it, anything with teeth and slobber and blood holy moly <laughs> that's <please>. that's good <laughs> get, you ever read get scud? me involved no i haven't so that's on my to-do list now scud was from the 90s created by uh, rob shrab he uh he co-directed monster house and um mm. uh he he did a lot on the sarah, sarah silverman show and then he was supposed to direct lego movie too mm. didn't happen but uh he's wicked sense of humor but Scud is a disposable assassin. It's about a robot. They, you go into a vending machine and you basically can get an assassin robot to go murder someone for you. Hell and so yeah. it, was, it was like this Looney Tunes meets Pulp Fiction, you know, black and white comic. It was super fun. I, I think that's what we need in the 21st century. <laughs> you know, I don't know how you guys are out there, but the last thing my country needs is more guns. <laughs> we, we've got snakes and we've got like crocodiles and we've got everything to fight off or on. I was just talking to Lauren before we started about cocas. Is it quakas? Oh, qu quakas, quakas, quakas. The little smiley guys. These little smiley hamsters, and I, and you, you when you first see them, you're like, that can't be real. And it turns out they're real. And now I'm like, mm. this is going to be amazing. All these these foreigners are going to show up wanting to to see the quakas, and they're going to get spiders the size of alien face huggers. You know, <laughs> they're, still, they're still like, look, they're on an isolated island just off the coast from where I live, but there is still snakes there so beware <laughs> there's plenty of spiders so <laughs> right. there's cute little fairy animals but yeah just just uh, fyi well that's awesome so is there any other advice you'd like to give out there for artists or anyone out there that is there anything you personal that you're like hey you know if i had been able to go back to to lauren 10 years ago you know and i would not listen to myself but i try is there anything you'd that's a good question because I've just really come to the realization of it recently is that bring yourself back down and realize that you got to put in the work and oh, it's, it's hard because you got to be, you got to put in a lot of work, but please don't be too self-critical on yourself that you don't actually publish anything. It, I had this idea of five, it could even be six years ago and I was too afraid to put it out into the world and worried about, you know, what, what will people think of stuff, but just put it out and create because the world's pretty boring with that creativity, you know? Right. Plus, Hey, you know, if you don't get a chance to put down your own ideas, no one's going to, who's going to ask you to, right. You know, yeah. so. and you can't actually reflect on it and you can't look at stuff and be like, I could improve on this. I could do this. I really enjoyed doing this part. It kind of helps you in the direction of where you want to go. So I think it was, who was it, like Jake Parker or something just said it's better done than not done at all. And I think that's a really good thing to tell yourself is just get it out there and complete it. Yeah, it's good advice. I think um, when I was younger, that whole like being so hard that you don't, you don't get anything out because, um, you know, you always want to improve. The way I, I got my head around that was, look, the how do I say this? Like, the day I stop wanting to improve, then I know I got a problem. So if yeah. I still want to improve, then then that's good. That's a good thing. Because sometimes you meet some artists who are like, oh, I'm the best ever. And you're like, yeah, all Calm right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, we, we, you're not going to win an award for being the best ever, yeah, you know? <laughs> that, was, that was me, though. That was me a couple of years, like, oh, I think like five years ago or something. And thankfully, I just was like, got my ass kicked. <laughs> well, I don't just said like, look, you really need to be a little bit humble. Well, the the quality is there, so I'm really a big fan of your <laughs> art, and I'm looking forward to getting the book. Uh, definitely got to get the word out about your Kickstarter. I'll do what I can, and Thank hopefully, you. if they send you enough moolas, Rob gets paid too. So you know, like yes, <laughs> everybody back it, and we can get a, like a variant. Rob, well, be great. Yeah, it'll be the, uh, I don't know, we'll find something to do there. It's lots of moolahs. So, all right, Lauren, yeah. <laughs> it's been really awesome. I really appreciate you coming on, taking the time to out of your your, oh, no. your, your wine Thank and, you. and oh, the fantastic scene. Yeah. Go 
wineries tomorrow, so sorry. <laughs> Bonus question for MasterChef Australia fans. Are you bummed out? <laughs> Are you... <laughs> All right. Like, Look, what is the vibe it's... over there with the George thing? Because I have my own opinions, but I'm just curious. Like, is it? Are they really mad at him? Like, is that true? Can I swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. Okay, George is an asshole. <laughs> oh, really? But we hope for the best. Uh, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, it was bummer. I didn't know about any of that stuff when the show went. So. Uh, well, you know how media blows everything up anyway, so who knows? Right, right. Well, maybe he'll come over and, and, and he'll do catering for your launch party. <laughs> oh, look, I'll, set, I'll set him an invite. He probably hasn't got much work going on. <laughs> oh, 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 all right, low blow, low blow. All right, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. And you have an open invitation to me to come on and talk about whatever you're doing. You're always welcome. Amazing. Right? Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. Talk to you soon. All right, everybody, we're going to get out of here. Let me just... Turn on the uh, the goodbye music really quick. Oh yeah, there's the goodbye music. All right, one. Lauren can mute her mic there really quickly. All right, folks, that was fun, right? That was fun. We learned a lot today. I think we learned that Lauren has a new book called Lana Lana Luca, and that if I could buy ten copies, if I could afford that, I would. But seriously. It was really awesome for her to come on. And just remember, folks, you know, there's a lot of people out there with talent. Uh, chances are you're going to be one of them. And you're going to have to hire me to draw a variant cover because I, I, I I'm not going to make any of the money any other way. Peace, everybody. Bye.